This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. This is lesson nine in this series that is all about jazz guitar. I am so excited to bring you this series on jazz guitar. This lesson is an exciting one. It's sort of a milestone. We're going to actually work on a tune together. We're going to work on comping the chords for the tune. We're going to work on playing the melody and we're going to work on improvising over that tune using all the skills that we have learned so so far in the course. So it's going to be awesome. Let's just go ahead and dive in. Now down in the description below you'll find a link where you can download a free copy of the sheet music for this lesson in PDF format. So it's a lead sheet for the tune that we're going to be working on, which is called B-flat blues for Charlie, which I'll explain here in a second. But it's a B-flat blues sort of based in the era of Charlie Christian. That's why B-flat blues for Charlie. And it's based on a blues progression that he wrote a tune on called Benny's Bugle for Benny Goodman. So this is my B-flat blues for Charlie based on the same chord progression of Benny's Bugle. I would have used Benny's Bugle, but Benny's Bugle is not in public domain so I'm not going to use it here on the channel but you can check it out. Charlie Christian wrote a lot of riff based tunes so this one was like and so on. So a riff and this is something that Charlie Christian was known for. They, they'd say that Charlie he's just riffing. He's always riffing meaning he has an idea and he develops it and he plays it over and over. So something becomes a riff when there's some sort of repetition to it. So this idea idea of dev is an idea but then it gets repeated and then it gets repeated again with some changes to the melody that fit the chord progression and then we go through some changes again based on the chord progression but it's all based on that idea of so the melody that I've written is a similar riff based tune based on the ideas that were used during the same era as Charlie Christian if you haven't listened to Charlie Christian before you're going to want to check him out he is definitely the father of jazz guitar anyone who plays jazz guitar owes something to him because even if we don't listen to him we're listening to players that were influenced by him or were influenced by players that were influenced by him and so on. So he is in our jazz guitar ancestry. He is that first one in so many ways, the first electric guitarist and really the first one to sort of play through the electric guitar sounds that were mimicking the, the solos of the horn players. So he's really the first one to do that and his style was so influential and it was actually helping push the sounds forward into what became bebop. So these are pre-bebop uh, eras that we're, we're kind of playing in right now, which is great because it works great as we establish this foundation and prepares us for playing bebop and anything that comes after bebop. So it's really great and it's kind of fun. This music is really fun. So, listening to Charlie Christian, super important, super helpful, super foundational. And even if you're only interested in playing really contemporary sounds, we all still owe things to him, things that were happening there, things that he helped push the language forward with, and things that really help us play contemporary and everything that's post-bop, bebop, and beyond, all those things much easier when we get inside of Charlie Christian. So you could even transcribe his solo on Benny's Bugle. There's probably more than one take that's been recorded, but lots of great things checking that out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at with this tune is the chord progression. Now you've got it there on the lead sheet. I've also got it written up here on the board. This is a B-flat blues, but it's different than the B-flat blues we did when we worked on the Freddie Green comping style with the shell voicings. So, this B-flat blues starts out with B-flat 6 for 3 bars, and then has B-flat 7 in that 4th bar, E-flat 6 for 2 bars, B, B flat 6 for 2 bars, F7 for 2 bars, and then B, B flat 6 really for 2 bars. But we usually throw in a turnaround chord. 
the dominant seventh chord in this case that pulls us back to the top. So we're going to throw that F7 in there to pull us back to the top, though we would never end on F7. We would end back on B flat six. So I want to mention just with this, sometimes we'll see blues tunes that have the one chord as a, as a major six chord especially in this early era, like Charlie Christian's tune, Benny's Bugle, written for Benny Goodman, has this same exact progression. And in the bebop era, especially with like Charlie Parker, we'll see some tunes, so we could say bird blues, that have the one chord and even the four chord as major six chords. And so we see that sometimes, but most of the time we usually see our one and four chords actually played as dominant seventh chords. But there are times, and like this right here, this time right here where we see them as major six chords, which really pays tribute to sort of the blues that were happening kind of more blues and pop blues, I don't know if we could use that term then, but where you had like a one chord and a one chord and a one chord and then it goes to the dominant seventh and then the four chord and then the four chord and the one and the one and the five and then a lot of times in those more blues or pop blues, blues we might go back to the four chord and one and having the one and four chord be major chords and the only one here, this being a secondary dominant, meaning it's the five chord of E flat, the key of E flat, and we call it a secondary dominant because it's not the five chord of the key of B flat, the F is, but it pulls to the E flat six, so it's it's functioning as a five seven chord of E flat, E flat, but it's in a secondary fashion to the key because it applies to E flat, not to B flat. Well, if you watch the Theory Thursday lessons as those uh, start coming out again and again, that sort of stuff will be covered there. So if you want a lot more in-depth detail on those kinds of things. So this is a basic blues with that 1-6 that chord instead of the, the dominant 7th chord and then the 4-6 chord instead of that. Let's go ahead and comp through this. I'm not going to review the shapes. If you happen to be jumping into this lesson and haven't seen the previous lessons, then you might want to check those out on these shapes. But I do have review material up here on the board. I have the arpeggio shapes written and then the squares are around the notes that belong to the shell voicings. So for our major six chord there are B flat. We've got here, here, and here. And then for B flat seven, here, here, and here. That's our dominant seventh. And then for E flat six we're here, here, and here. And for B flat six we're back. And then for F7, we're here, here, and here. And then back to B flat six and F7. I'm not gonna explain the Freddie Green style, but this is a great one to play in that Freddie Green style. Try not to stand in front of this, though you should have the lychee and can see this there. But we're gonna go one, a two, a one, two, ready, we'd have B flat six. We have the B flat seven, E flat six, B flat six, F seven, B flat six, and then the F seven, and then we're there. Now it's really great to practice these at a lot of different tempos. So take this a little bit slower here. She's gonna have one, a uh, two. I want to, we got the B flat six. And then the B flat seven to E flat six. And B flat six. And F seven. And B flat F seven. There and let's take it a little bit faster. So one, a two, a one, two, ready and and we can take it even a little bit faster. So you got one, two, one, two, three, four.
practice it at a lot of different tempos. You can practice that with a metronome if you want. And you can practice that right along with any of the backing tracks. So there are four different backing tracks for this lesson at four different tempos. One that is at 101 beats per minute, one that is 121 beats per minute, one that is at 144 beats per minute, and then one that jumps up to 170 beats per minute. So you can play right along with those backing tracks if you want to and comp right along with the Freddie Green that is on there. And if you need help with the Freddie Green style, then you can go back and check out, I think it was lesson four, where we really go over the Freddie Green style. If you need help with these chord shapes, you can check out the three lessons that precede that. So there's the chords and we got that down. Let's go ahead and take a look at this melody. So it's written on the lead sheet in both standard music notation and tablature. Now that's kind of unusual. Usually we don't see a lead sheet written that way, but I'm a guitarist and I'm here for you because I assume some of you don't know how to read actual written notation, standard music notation, which is something if you're really serious about playing jazz guitar and playing in an ensemble, then reading music is really important. Both being able to read the individual notes and being able to follow along and read chord progressions. So, we're gonna, we've got these here. If you don't know how to read uh, notation, I suggest you work through the note reading books one, two, and three, which are all part of my method book series that have online lessons here on the Academy. And so those books are available through Google Play digitally and on Amazon. So if you need help learning to read notation, I suggest you go through those. Books one and two are combined together in one book. They cover first position. Book three covers the rest, just covers all the neck in all the different positions, which is really where we end up reading in jazz. But if you've never read before, it might be good to start with books one and two. Okay, but I've got it here in tablature to help you out. And one of the big challenges with reading notation in jazz is that rarely are we given the position. Like when we're working on classical music, if something's been notated and sort of been fingered out, sometimes we'll be told what position to do each thing in. With jazz uh, notation, it's usually just there and we have to figure it out and a lot of times we actually have to transpose it up an octave because we'll just be reading on a standard lead sheet uh, that could be written for any instrument in concert key whereas guitar sounds an octave lower than the note that is written and so this is written in true true guitar notation placement and the tablature there kind of helps you figure how to play it. This is happening in the same positions that we've been improvising in B flat, E flat, and F4. So this should finger good. Now I'm just going to play through it so you can hear what it sounds like and you've got it written there. And then you can use this as a reference point. If you can't just read it, use this as a reference point with your ear to figure it out. So it sounds like this. You got one, a two, a one, two, ready, and... And so there it is. Now, traditionally, a lot of times with blues tunes, we'll play the melody twice. Not always will we hear that in this era of like the Charlie Christian era, the pre-bebop era, the 20s, the, the 30s. We're not really always hearing that. Part of the reason for that is on the recordings, they only had just like three minutes to record. So there wasn't time to waste with all those sorts of things. So you can choose to play that melody twice. You can just play it once. I'm just gonna play it once as I work through these backing tracks and demonstrate some things for you as we continue. But you could play it more than once if you want. Now I bass this, it's a riff bass tune, maybe with a little bit more elaboration than some of the riff bass tunes of this era, but riff bass things were really popular during the swing era. You'll see that a lot with Count Basie, you see that all the time with Charlie Christian, so you could even write your own 
own riff bass tune in B flat using these shapes and some of the other notes that we're going to be working on here, especially as we progress. In this lesson, we're working with this tune. In the next lesson, we're going to work with a tune in the key of F. So we're going to work both of these most common keys for playing blues, uh, 12 bar blues in. And they're really beneficial because once we get those down on the guitar, playing in other keys is actually pretty easy. It's just shifting to another position. So we're playing in these. And then the lessons in the next, in the lessons that follow the next one after this one where we've done these two tunes, we're going to go into some other aspects of improvisation. We're going to start adding some other notes in with our arpeggios. It's going to be great. But as we improvise here with this tune, speaking of improvisation, we're going to continue to use the arpeggio shapes for now that we've been working on. So we're going to apply that technique here. So we've been working on improvising with the major sixth and the dominant seventh arpeggio shapes. We're going to improvise solos using these shapes here. So with the B flat six chord, obviously, we've got our option of playing our normal B flat 6 arpeggio and my root is at that 6th fret on the 6th string so easy there. When we get to B flat 7 then we can change it over to the dominant 7th. There is only one note difference. I wouldn't go and stress too much if you don't catch that one note in that 4th bar of this progression. So if you don't catch it it's okay if you just keep playing the major 6. I wouldn't stress it too much but we're going to go to the B flat 7 chord there. And then we move on to the E flat 6. So we've got this one here. And then we're back to the B flat 6. And then we've got the F7. And then we go back to B flat 6. And then we've got the F7. And I wouldn't stress it if you keep B flat 6 going for two bars there too and don't always catch the F7. That's okay. But once you kind of get going, it's, a, it's good. It's good when you can catch that. Now, one of the best things to do as you get ready to improvise over the chord progression for a tune is to actually just arpeggiate through using your arpeggio shapes. So right now we've got these ones. Arpeggiate through in that chord progression, staying within the rhythm, the harmonic rhythm we call that. So in this case, we would, imp we would go ahead and arpeggiate with fluid eighth notes or continuous eighth notes, just playing eighth notes, for three measures using the B flat six one, and then for one measure using B flat seven, and then for two measures with the E flat six, two measures for B flat six, two measures for F seven, and two measures for B B flat six or if you're up for it one measure of B flat six and one with that turnaround chord of F7 so if I start on this note of my major six chord there and I didn't mention but these little circles remind us where the roots are the squares were around those those chord shapes so if I start here on that note I would have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four that flat at seven and then it's really the best if I can do it if I keep going in the E, the e flat shape without starting there in the bottom so I'm going to and then I'm back to B flat and then I kind of come up to F back to B flat and back to F if I can fit it in if you got it and you can just work through it like that get kind of comfortable start finding your way through that's a really good exercise as I've demonstrated in the last lesson and the one before uh, two before that where we were working with improvising with these shapes okay so now, we've got the melody, we've got the arpeggios here, and if you need to review those or view previous lessons, you can, and we've comped the chords. As I go through, I've got these backing tracks here, and what I'm going to do at these different tempos is I'm going to play the melody, and then I'm going to improvise using these shapes 
over a couple, three choruses so you can get some ideas. You can play right along with me. I'm going to do it at each of the different tempos of the backing tracks just as a demonstration. So you can play right along with me, get some ideas, and hopefully have fun doing that. And then in the next lesson, which will be coming after this one, we'll be doing F blues for Charlie. So an F blues, an F riff blues, working on these things in the key of F. And then after that, as we progress through the lessons, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to start working on some more improv techniques, bringing some other notes into our improvisation, which we'll probably be so ready for. So super fun. All right, so we're going to go through here with these backing tracks. You can play right along with me. And as I've mentioned before, all the backing tracks we use on these lessons are available on the channel. Jazz jam tracks, jazz jam backing tracks. Oh, jazz jam along, I think, backing tracks. Sorry about that. Jam along backing tracks. Those are in that playlist. They're also down in the description below. There's a link for the ones that we're going to use. So this first one will start off nice and slow at that, that tempo of 101 beats per minute. It's going to give us six beats and then a little bit of a rest so we can find, so it'll be a two, beat, uh, two bar uh, count off, so to speak, give us room so we can find the beginning of the tune. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll do this first one. All right, we'll do 121 beats per minute now.
144 now. Was super fun for you. Hope you got some ideas on how you can improvise just with chord tones. Lots of different tempos, of course, those are there so you can work at whichever ones you need to and feel comfortable with. If all you feel comfortable with is that 101 BPM, that is totally fine. It's okay to just solo there and work on these skills there. But we want to try and be disciplined at this point and try and play as much as we can just using these chord tones. A lot of times my person students will want to go to the blue scale or something and we don't want to do that not yet there are times where we do want to do that but right now we're trying to gain control with these chord tones right inside these changes and then as we move forward in the course we'll learn many many more aspects of the jazz language so awesome in the next lesson we're gonna work on the F blues this chord progression in the key of F with a whole new riff based tune so that's what we're gonna be doing in the next lesson
lesson. It's going to be great. Hope you are having fun with this. Keep at it. Take care and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.